I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you a video which is actually for my subscriber who wants to understand limits for trigonometric functions. So I'm beginning from the very basics and we'll gradually uh, complicate uh, the functions so that we can find limits for all kinds of trigonometric functions. Treat this as the very first video in this series. We need to evaluate limit of sine theta when theta approaches zero, limit when theta approaches zero for cosine theta, limit when theta approaches zero for tan theta, and limit for sine theta when theta approaches pi by four. Remember, most of the time, rather all the time, the angle, the argument theta, or whatever the argument is, should be in radians when we are talking about limits of trigonometric functions. So let's understand how to find these limits sine theta. I'll just sketch the graph and then that should help us to understand the concept also. right? So that is the sine wave. So whenever we say sine that means it starts at zero and then it increases. So kind of you could say it starts here. So I'll take this point. So let's say this is my x-axis where we'll write theta and this is my y-axis. So that's the sine wave. And you can clearly see that when you approach zero from either side, whether it is from the left side or from the right side, you're approaching a value which is zero. Since sine is a continuous function, limit is same as value of the function at this point, right? And therefore, we can write down this answer as limit for sine theta as theta approaches zero is equal to zero, right? So it is also the value of function at theta equals to zero, right? Which is sine of zero. So you can say sine of zero is zero, right? So the limit is same as the value of function since the function is continuous, correct? Now let's look into the cosine graph. So I just draw a sine wave kind of like this, but the cosine function starts with one, right? So I could say, uh, let this be my y-axis and let this be the x-axis rather theta, right? So we have theta on this side and on this side we have the function which is cosine theta, right? As you approach zero, we approach a value one, right? This is plus and minus one, correct? Okay, so whether you are approaching from the left side or from the right side, the value which you approach is one and therefore limit for cos theta as theta approaches zero is one, right? So we can write, I mean, we can write cos of zero is equals to one. Since both are continuous functions, right? So, so we have continuous functions. So we find that the limit uh, as theta approaches zero for for the function, which is f of x, is actually equals to the value of function at zero, correct? So that is what you also see here. And let's look into the tan function, right? So let me sketch the tan function. It looks something like this. So I'll just uh, sketch a portion of it, which is uh, close to zero. So it is, uh, let's say, these are your asymptotes, and the function will be Kind of like this going okay. right so that is what tan function is and you can see as you approach zero from the left side or from the right side you approach a value which is zero so this value is also zero so what we get here is tan theta is equal to zero when theta approaches zero from left side or from the right side now you can see very clearly that limit when theta approaches, this is pi by 2, right? And this is minus pi by 2, right? So when theta approaches pi by 2, well, let me sketch this portion also. Let's say like kind of like this, right? Okay. So as pi by 2, uh, for tan theta, then what is the limit? When you approach this, it approaches from the left side, positive infinity. From the right side, negative infinity. So it does not exist. Is that okay? Now, tan theta is not a continuous function. So, so it may not have limit at few points. You can see it does not exist for theta when theta approaches 
pi by 2 or odd multiples right times 2n plus 1 where n belongs to integers is it okay so those limits do not exist for tan theta that's a point to remember now let's look into the limit for sine theta when theta approaches pi by 4 since the function is continuous we could just substitute this value here so we get sine pi by 4 right so that's what we get and what is sine pi by 4 sine pi by 4 is 1 over square root 2 or you could also write this as square root 2 over 2 after rationalization right one of the same thing anyway this video tells us that sine cosine functions are continuous they are limited at any point the same as the value of that function at that point tan theta is a discontinuous function it may not have limit at few points and those are for theta equals to odd multiples of pi by 2 at rest of the places it is same as the value of the function I'm Anil Kumar and now let's move on to the next series a video on this series which will tell us a bit more about trigonometric functions limit. I hope that helps. Thank you and all the best.